Okay, this is just like a little mini tutorial video on well, basically just some few things and people complain about when mod, uh, exporting models from Lime and Lime and that things so like they don't really quite get. So I'm just going to show it on Modern Warfare 2. Uh, I'm going to search for the MP5. Let's support that. So if you want it in Maya, you'll get the binary file and the Maya script file. It's obviously it's, it's the same name and then underscore bind. So I've opened up Maya, just gonna drag the MA in. We hit uh, let me just full screen this. If you hit six for textured mode, you obviously it looks really weird, like that half the gun's missing or something. If you go into non-textured mode, it's obvious it's all there. So all it is is just the uh, textures. Basically, Call of Duty will use the alpha channel in the rendering process for addition to like create a different like additional detail like bump mapping and stuff like. But it will store it in the alpha channel, but obviously when you put it into Maya, Maya doesn't know that the alpha channel has been used for this, and it just makes it transparent. You can either just remove the alpha channel directly from the texture or you can stop it being rendered by removing the alpha connection like I am doing now uh, the Lime in for Black Ops 2 has DXT5 alpha removal but uh, Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops 1 don't currently have it as a feature but I'll add it in at some point if you wish to use it so which basically automatically removes the alpha texture from the image. All right, okay, so it's done. So now there's no bits missing and it's been run completely correct. What you notice as well is that you've got all the scopes. That's basically because in COD, the weapon file, model file, will include like all its attachments and then at runtime it'll just hide all the other ones except from the ones it, you've not using so that means they only have to include the one model file and then just switch between scopes when it's rendering also people complain about the clips and these things all being on one mesh so basically all you have to do is if you get this bind file and you drag it on and uh, just go view so now it's all like joint all the joints are connected even though the bolt is the same as the clip mesh, it's it's been individually binded to the correct joint. So if I select the clip, it only moves the the bolt and not that bit of the mesh. Same for the clip. So if you just move the clip burn, just the clip moves, even though they are still the same mesh. So if you're using it in COD or you just want to reanimate it, like there's no reason to like separate these meshes because you can just animate on these joints here. For the tags, the scopes and stuff, uh, you can just hide them in layers or delete them if you wish. So like if you just create a layer, so you can just drag them out as well, I guess. Uh, and let's go red dot. So you can just select the base tag each of each one and move the entire scope. So that's how the scope is moved off. Obviously, the silencer has its own tag, so you can move the silencer off or just delete the silencer. Uh, if you wanted to hide. I think you can hide by this one. No, you can't. Let uh, me just delete this there. Ooh. That's it to tab check. Right, my layers have been 
but you can just delete like hide them the layers. Um, Alright, I'll show them again. Just uh, M16 again. Okay, so again, it looks a bit weird, stuff like that, and there's loads of attachments and stuff, so I'm just going to quickly neaten it up in there. If you were putting this to another COD game, you wouldn't really need to neaten it up, because you could just put it in directly, use the textures as they are, and then hide the attachments in the weapon file. But like, it's only if you want to use this weapon for stuff outside of Call of Duty that you'd need to, you probably want to tidy it up for whatever purpose you need. So I'm just going to quickly remove the arch and remove the scroll materials in this one. The Modern Warfare 2 support will be released uh, right in a day or two. Maybe even like today, day it depends. I'm just going to check everything on it before I release it. Okay, so just this one to do. Okay, so now this is when I want. Again, I'm going to drag the bind script on. Go to outline it, select that, edit, select out, and we are selected. So now we can just drag these scopes out if we wanted to and then you could delete the meshes for them if you didn't want them. So I read that. And the scope. Okay, so then there's also loads of on the barrel stuff like uh, shotgun. So you can drag the shotgun off. And the under barrel grenade launcher. And obviously this foregrip, this to touch it as well. So if you wanted to use this weapon without the heartbeat as well, and get rid of the heartbeat, and then just like just select it and like delete the meshes or whatever. You know what you do. Um, click the mesh on this one separate. Tag silence is obviously on. Silence, which is there if you want to remove the silencer. Okay, so on this side of the weapon, you'll see that there's loads of like holes. Like, there's not a mesh here. Some people are like, why is the gun not complete? And basically, if you think about it in game, you only ever see this side of the weapon, depending on the reload animations. Some reload animations have it tilt over enough that you would be able to see this side but for the guns that you, you never see these sections off what they do is they just delete that part of the mesh to save on vertices for the weapon so obviously you get better rendering performance because it's less stuff to render so that's, it is intentional and there's not, there is actually meant to be a whole other um, yeah that's part of it really if you wanted to remove the alpha channel like manually from the text you'll show you to uh, uh, just second position. Okay, so I'm just gonna open the texture. See in Photoshop it uh, Photoshop doesn't render alpha channels. But you can see the alpha channel there. Right, it renders it as red. So if you just select it, I delete the channel. If I go in here, it's this one here. Uh, and just resize this. So then we go to save that. And also that is, um, you could save it as a DTX1, that would get rid of the alpha as well. But I'm just going to save it as a DTX5. So now that's all being updated without alpha. So you can it's up to you what you want to do. As I said, uh, I will include a DATX file removal setting for the IDVD system in an update. Okay, that's it.